everybody, it's Pixelation. There is just too much anime. I know, right? That's the weirdest thing to ever come out of my mouth, but it's true. There's just really too much. Too much for any one person to consume in an average lifetime. And so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to take a look at the upcoming titles, which uh, depending on when this video actually gets published, it may have already started. The season may have already started, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and run through some of the titles that are have either aired or will be airing in this season um, and give you my thoughts on them. I don't know if you value my thoughts that much, but if you do, then... This video might help you to determine what you want to see in this season uh, and what you don't want to see. Now, I want to go ahead and preface this with a disclaimer that uh, you do not need to listen to me. Um, some titles that I, you know, I have a certain type of anime that I enjoy and I have a certain type that I abhor, that I avoid at all, at all costs. And so that being said, if there's a title that I don't want to see that I put on the no list and you really want to see it, don't listen to me. Go watch your show. It, it's your show. You know, it's, 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 it's what you enjoy. Um, don't, don't change your mind because of this video, okay? Because... That there's, you know, I'm really just a talking head, okay? That's all I am. So, that being said, don't go to the comments and, and, and tell me I'm wrong for not liking a certain show that you enjoy. Because it's, at the end, it all boils down to my opinion. And that's it. I'm not saying you're wrong for liking some show. Except, you know, unless you like certain, certain shows. Certain shows. Certain shows. I won't go into those shows, but certain shows, if you like them, I worry about your sanity. But, that being said, uh, everything else is pretty much fair game, okay? Okay? We good? We good? We good? We good? We good? We good? Okay, let's go. Let's go ahead and jump into the fall 2017 season, starting with uh, Kekai Sensen and Beyond. Now, Kekai Sensen and Beyond. Okay, so Kekai Sensen is a blood blockade battlefront, for those of you who are not aware. Um, I just recently, finally, managed to watch the first episode of the original Kekai Sensen. I, uh... I actually kind of enjoyed it. I haven't watched any more of it because I was distracted with My Hero Academia. But that being said, uh, Kekai Sensen was not, the first episode was not bad. I might continue it, and in which case, I might watch Kekai Sensen and Beyond. Um, it's probably going to be on Crunchyroll because, I mean, the, the, the original series is on Crunchyroll, so it makes sense that it would be on, but most likely it will be on Funimation as well. Um, so that being said, um, Kekai Sensen and Beyond, there's no real uh, synopsis for it, but it does say it's going to be 12 episodes, which makes sense because the original was 12 episodes. It, it, is, uh, it is produced by Bones, which is a really good studio. If you don't know, Bones is um, pretty sure they are Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, and then they are also um, Mob Psycho, I believe. Mob Psycho 100, yes. Um, and so I'm really excited to see what they're able to do with the first series and then hopefully continue on with the second series. Um, I am very curious how much further it can go with the uh, alliteration naming scheme, uh, you know, Blood Blockade Battlefront and beyond, what are they going to do next? Blood Blockade Battlefront and, uh, uh, Blurns Ball? I don't know. Anyway, that one starts on October 7th, so if you are interested in checking that out, keep your eyes open for announcements for Kekai Sensen and beyond. Next up on the list is Mahotsukai no Yome, or uh, The Ancient Magus' Bride. Uh, I've heard uh, talk in the grapevine about this one. I don't know much about it, per se. I know the base, the base skeleton of the plot. Um, I don't know a lot about like the specifics of it, though. It seems interesting. I've been told to watch it. But apparently they have some OVAs or some standalones that they've kind of put on Crunchyroll. Uh, in the past, and <clears throat> I've been told that they're pretty good, I just haven't gotten a chance to check them out yet. Uh, but it is produced by Wit Studio, which is the studio who did uh, Attack on Titan, which I'm really excited to see what else they can do. Um, so, that being said, uh, let's take a look at the uh, synopsis, and we'll, uh, see. yeah. So, uh, Mahotsuke no Yome uh, is about uh, Chisei Hattori has lived a life full of neglect and abuse, devoid of anything resembling love. Far from the warmth of family, she has had her share of troubles and pitfalls. Just when all hope seems lost, a fateful encounter awaits her. When a man with the head of a beast, wielding strange powers, obtains her through a slave auction, she says life will never be the same again. Now, I won't lie. 
as a from an outsider perspective, it seems like well, of course it of course it's anime. Uh, it seems like a very. Mm, I mean, it's obviously not going to go into the realm of like hentai. Like I believe I believe the anime man made a reference to the fact that he's heard a lot of uh sh a lot of hentai shows that start off with this premise. Uh, I don't think it's gonna go in that realm because it is Wit Studio, and I don't think that they're gonna produce a hentai but uh it does seem a little weird uh, so i'm gonna give it a try but um I, I don't know i don't know yet i don't know what to think about it yet because it is very much a uh i don't know what to expect i haven't seen the ovas so i don't know uh if you like mahotsuke no yume uh by all means uh, leave a comment let me know if you recommend it or not because i actually do want to check it out because it what, what, what little i've seen of it it seems interesting but the plot is a little <coughs> weird to say the least uh so that being said let's move on to uh uh to dias ira um okay uh it is based on a visual novel uh, I don't know anything about this one either. There's a lot of titles on this list that I don't know anything about. So uh, if you're curious, <clears throat> my chances are sorry, I haven't heard of it. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, May 1st, 1945, Berlin. As the Red Army raises the Soviet flag, a group of Nazi officers conduct a ritual using the slaughter in the city to bring back the LDO, Superman, whose coming would bring the world's destruction. Their success remains unknown. Present day Suwahara City, Ren Fuji, Fuji sends, spends his days at the hospital due to a violent fight with his best friend, Shiro. He tries to value what he has left to him, but he is haunted by Shiro's words. Everyone who remains in this city eventually loses their minds. And a recurring dream of a guillotine, murders, and the Black Cloud Knights pursuing them. Um, okay, so this is misleading, to say the least. I, um... I would have thought this would be a, uh, a, a series that was mainly like a, like a war-based anime. Like, we've had a couple in the past. Um, Izetta the Last Witch. Uh, what, uh, what's it? Um, Saga of Tanya the Evil. A couple of, like, war-based, like, World, World War II-based anime. Uh, and this seems like the kind of anime that would be following in those footsteps, but it seems a lot also kind of like it takes place in the modern day, which would mean it's not a World War II anime. But, I mean, I, I don't know. It seems, you know, it seems like it will be a interesting title. I just don't know what to expect. That, that's, that, that's a lot of the new titles. I just don't know what to expect from them. Because the synopses are so uh, vague, I guess, to say the least. But they're still interesting enough, despite the fact that they're bullet vague. I don't know. Um... Anyway, so moving on, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on any one title because there are a lot of anime, like I said in the beginning, to go through, and I only have a limited amount of time to talk about them. So uh, next up, we've got uh, Shokugeki no Soma San no Sara, which is the third season of Food Wars. Uh, I have only seen one episode of Food Wars, and I immediately dropped it like a hot potato. Um, but... I know it has a ridiculously huge fan base, so if you enjoy, uh, if you enjoy it, it is coming back for a third season, um, and yeah. <laughs> um, next up we got Black Clover, which oh my gosh, I'm excited for this because Black Clover is basically it's purported to be the next Naruto. It's actually even produced by Studio Piro, which did Naruto. Um, Black Clover is, uh, it seems like the next kind of big shonen series that possibly might replace Bleach or Naruto in the, you know, the top tier of shonen anime. Um, Asta is a young boy who dreams of becoming the greatest mage in the kingdom. Only one problem, he can't use any magic. Oh, oh, what, what, what? He can't use any magic? That's, that's weird. I get the premise. Luckily for Asta, he receives the incredibly rare five-leaf clover grimoire that gives him the power of anti-magic. Can someone who can't use magic really become the Wizard King? One thing's for sure, Asta will never give up. Believe it! Um, no, but seriously though, it is, um, it, it is 
looking to be a interesting title. It might not be really much of anything new, but then again, what anime title is? Um, don't answer that because I know somebody could probably somebody in this world could probably give me a title that is just completely out there and new, and I would be like, okay, sure, yeah, all right. Inuyashiki, uh, Inuyashiki, um, I've actually heard of this before, I don't know where, I think I saw the manga somewhere, maybe on the Crunchyroll manga app, I think, I don't know, but I know I've seen, like, the manga cover somewhere, and it was like, huh, that sounds a lot like Inuyasha, I guarantee you it's nothing like Inuyasha, though, uh, so, anyway, uh, Ichiro Inuyashiki is down on his luck, while only 58 years old, his geriatric looks often have him written off as a pathetic old man by the world around him, and he's constantly ignored and disrespected by his family, despite all that he's done to support them. On top of everything else, his doctor has revealed that he... Uh, wait, hold on, where is it? His doctor has revealed that he has cancer, and it appears that he has little time left in this world. But just when it seemed things couldn't get any worse, a blinding light in the night sky strikes the earth where Ichiro stands. He later wakes up to find himself unscathed, but he soon starts to notice that there's something different about himself. Ooh. And the fact that this, the, the synopsis comes from Crunchyroll gives me hope that this is actually going to be on Crunchyroll. Uh, I'm finding a lot, finding that most of these shows that I want to see are ended up going to be on Anime Strike or High Dive, and I just don't have the money for that. And I'm not going to pirate it, so it's like, don't even, don't even comment telling me, anime, anime, kiss anime, I'm, uh, I'm, no, no, screw those guys, no. Uh, but anyway, Inuyashiki seems interesting. Uh, I might actually give it a try if it's on Crunchyroll. Um, it, it, I don't know what to, I don't know what it's really gonna be about though. I, I get that it's about Ichiro Inuyashiki and all that. I get that, but it's like, what kind of genre is it gonna be? Is this action, sci-fi, psychological? So I'm thinking it's gonna be more like a, like a. At, well, obviously, like an action crime drama kind of thing, and I'm really excited to see how, how they tackle it. Because um, it does seem interesting. It does seem kind of something that really hasn't been done. Oh, God, I just re I just, I just ran into my own hole. I just ran into my own uh, loophole there. Uh, anyway. Oh, boy! I'm so excited! Himoto and Maruchan are... <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, not really. I watched the first season. I finished it. I, I enjoyed it for the most part, but will I come back for a season two? Maybe? 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 Just because. Now, okay, first th first impressions, uh, just because, reminds me, it kind of seems like one of those titles that might be, like, the token really good romantic comedy drama. Um, you know, I think a couple seasons ago we had Orange, and, uh, you know, that was really good. And then, you know, last season, what did we have? My mind is already blanking up! Um, but anyway, Just Because is uh, by Pine Jam, which is the, uh, the studio that did Gamers, which I'm really excited to see what their next title is. Um, the original anime, Just Because, focuses on subtly portraying the feelings of a group of high school students nearing graduation, near the end of the second semester at third year, when students have very little time in high school left and are just waiting for graduation, the appearance of a new transfer student brings to the change what remains of their high school lives just as they were about to graduate yeah there we go i got it eventually um but that seems interesting it seems like it's gonna be like a uh romantic drama comedy kind of thing and uh in fact what are the what are the it, it, the yeah the genre is just romance so that makes sense um so yeah, I'll, I'll check it out depending on where what it's on. That's that's the big thing is that there's so many com so many uh, services nowadays. That I just I can't guarantee that I'll check out any of these titles. But you know whatever's on Crunchyroll, I'm gonna give my best effort to, to, to check it out. And uh, if I like it, I'll keep up with it. If I don't, then you know obviously not. But uh, anyway.
Kino no Tabi, The Beautiful World, the animated series. Uh, now, I've heard a little bit about this one, and it seems very interesting. Um, I have heard that it is a, a remake of an anime that, ha that was a while back. I don't know any specific dates or details about the original, but this one seems very interesting. Uh, it, it, the story follows the travels of Kino, a young adventurer who rides a talking motorcycle named Hermes. They explore the people and cultures of different places throughout their adventures, spending only three days at each location. Um, I, I've heard Crunchyroll apparently uh, compared it to, you know, the three-episode rule. You know, you don't spend any more than three episodes on any given anime series. And sometimes you do, but they kind of made that comparison, and I kind of found that funny. But, yeah, for the most part, it does seem very... It seems interesting. The, the animation, from what I've seen, is really good. It's by Lurke, or Lurk, Lurk, Lurch, Lurke, I don't know. However you say that. Um, I've always pronounced it Lurke, but I don't, I don't know. Again. And, uh, so yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like it's going to be one of those, uh, kind of one of those emotional, uh, drama series that's going to be kind of, like, it's going to, it's, uh, they it, it credited the adventure, drama, and fantasy, um, but I get the feeling like it's going to be a heart, it's going to tug on your heartstrings a little bit, um, because... I mean, who knows? You know, after spending three days in each location, maybe someday he decides I want to stay here, and he doesn't allow himself to. I don't know. I don't know what could happen in Kino's journey. Okay. Uh. But anyway, it's moving on. Uh. Kujira no Kora Wasajo ni Utao. Uh. Sorry for the butchering of the Japanese language. I am. American, and I cannot, I'm, I'm English, and I cannot, uh, I can't talk in Japanese yet. Um, Chakuro is the 14-year-old archivist of the Mud Whale, a nigh-utopian island that floats across the surface of an endless sea of sand. Nine and ten of the inhabitants of the Mud Whale have been blessed and cursed with the ability to use Saimia, special powers that doomed them to an early death. What are we going in Bokorano territory? Chakuro and his friends have stumbled across the other islands, but they have never met, seen, or even heard a human who wasn't from their own. One day, Chakuro visits an island as large as the Mud Whale and meets a girl who will change his destiny. Oh boy! We got another one of those series. You know, the the whole, oh my gosh, my, my life is so interesting and plain. Oh my gosh, I met a girl who will change my life. You know, the, the kind of series that it's like if you just take one thing out of the premise, it's completely just, it, it makes the series impossible to function. Yeah, that kind of series. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it has a bunch of girls on the cover and the one guy. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that it is a harem anime. Uh, I, I just, that's the kind of thing that when you watch enough anime, you, you, when you look at the promo, when you look at the promotional art, and you see one guy and a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of girls you automatically assume that it's a, it's it's a harem anime and uh they kind of have a hit or miss with me uh sun got no lion too uh, or uh march comes in like a lion um yeah i i watched the first episode of that one of the, the original march comes in like a lion and i i wasn't too sure about it i i, I wanted to go back to it because it is a Studio Shaft production, and I really enjoy Studio Shaft, if you couldn't tell, based on my uh, love of the Monogatari series and of the Negima uh, uh, version that they did. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to checking it out in any depth yet, but it is something that I do want to pick up on. So, who knows? I might catch up and uh, watch, this, uh, watch the second season of, of March Comes In Like a Lion. I don't know. We'll see. UQ Holder, Maho Sensei Negima 2. Oh my gosh. I I cannot say enough about this. Okay, I just got done saying how I enjoy Negima. I loved the Negima anime back when I didn't know what a good anime was. Um, looking back, I realized it was kind of crap. Well, second season is fantastic. Don't 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 doubt that. First season was it was okay, but that being said, what they did was they kind of did the whole Full Metal Alchemist thing where they kind of ran out of budget and time 
to and then they couldn't catch up with the manga so, or, the, or the manga got behind or something so they had to from what I understand this could be completely off but I'm pretty sure this is what happened is they had to come up with the anime original ending and as a result it was just subpar ending um, and so they never really got around to finishing the animation they they animated some OVAs shafted of uh, some later arcs in the anime in, in the manga they never actually connected them to the uh, whole the manga the, you know the anim, the original anime and then they made it an anime original movie which seemed like that was going to be the end of it and then you know Kinakamatsu made uh, the UQ holder manga which and then he confirmed that it was a continuation of Negima Lawnmower Chan Anyway but yeah, then he confirmed that it was the uh, it, it was the the continuation of Negima, and now they're gonna just make an anime for UQ Holder without actually con making a proper anime for Maho Sensei Negima. I find this to be kind of disrespectful. I won't lie. I feel like if they're going to market this anime with the Maho Sensei Negima name. Like, they're literally calling it Maho Sensei Negima 2. It makes sense for the manga to call itself Maho Sensei Negima 2 because at least the manga continued and finished. You know, the original Maho Sensei Negima 2, like, original Maho Sensei Negima actually finished. It was done, you know? It makes sense that the manga would call itself Maho Sensei Negima 2. But they never made an anime for the original, so why would you call it 2? Why? Why would you do this? It, it, it's... I, I, I didn't want to watch it, but I kind of do now, only because I know that I can't, because it's going to be on uh, High Dive, I believe, probably. Either High Dive or Anime Strike, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, in the decades since the world became aware of the existence of magic, the world has undergone a massive up upheaval. However, a boy named Toto lives in seclusion in a rural town far removed from these changes. His ordinary life is highlighted by these magic using by his magic using female teacher and his supportive friends. When his tranquil daily life is disrupted, he embarks on a unique adventure. Um, on the as you can see on the promotional art, you can see that there's you know looks like what an older version of Negi, uh, Notica, UA, uh, Jack Racken, um, Yukihime. I'm pretty sure I've heard that Yukihime is an, uh, Evangeline, which is. Uh, kind of an interesting connection and then that might up at, up at the top that might be uh Setsuna I don't know but the point is is that it is a continuation it's not just a spin-off it is a spin-off but it's not just a spin-off there's a continuation characters will be appearing in this anime that have not gotten full arcs so fans will be confused as hell I know they will be unless you read the manga of course in which case you know you won't be confused but if, you, if you're just picking this up for the first time it's gonna be really confusing and it's like why would you do this why would you do this? Just make the fucking first anime and then make the second anime. It's that simple. It's that simple. Anyway. Alright, let's move on, shall we? Juni Tyson. Uh, the record of the bloody battle between the 12 proud warriors. Oh, man. That sounds a lot like a Fate series. The 12th... The 12th 12 tournament... That gets held every 12 years. Get 12 brave warriors who bear the names of the signs of the Zodiac. Fight each other for lives and souls. The participants are 12 every... Or every Wait. Wait, hold on. The participants are 12 very strange warriors. Okay, there we go. Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. The victor of this tournament gets to have one wish granted, whatever the wish may be. The one wish they want granted. Who will be the final survivor whose tears will flow on the bloody battlefield filled with con conspiracy and murder? A soul shaking battle royale is about to begin. Sounds a lot like a mix between like the Fate Stay Night and... Or Fate Zero and... Uh, uh, oh, Etotama? Uh, with the whole Zodiac thing. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem like something that I would be in a rush to really watch, but it might be good. 
Who knows? I mean, it's animated by Grafinica, which I don't know who what they've done in the past. So, uh, I can't really... I don't have a really basic reference for what kind of anime they've made in the past. But, uh, anyway. Uh, Boku no Kanojo ga Majime Sugiru Shoujo Bitch na Ken. Um, I've heard this th English title is something along the lines of, like, my first girlfriend is, like, a virgin bitch or something like that. I, I don't know really anything about what uh, that means. It seems like a cultural reference, and uh, I don't have much of a cultural background in terms of Japanese culture, so I can't really uh, comment on that. Um, but <clears throat> it is by Diomedia, which uh, did uh, a lot of titles in the past, actually. Uh, the one thing that's coming to mind is, uh, pretty sure they did, uh, Mayoiga, which, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that looks. Um, with nothing left to lose, ordinary high school student Haruka Shinozaki confesses to beautiful, diligent class representative Akiho Kosaka, and to his surprise, she accepts. Kosaka takes dating as seriously as she does everything else, but does not quite get it. She pragmatically suggests activities that are too sexual. Ooh. I mean. Huh. So that's, that's our uh, first, that's, that's our Hajime Tenno Gal of the season. I can guarantee you that's the, that's the uh, fall 2017 version of Hajime Tenno Gal. Um. One more chan! Uh, Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoko. Um. Oh! Oh, I know this one. I've heard of this. I, I think I heard about this initially whenever I was watching the uh, Anime Man's version of this video. <laughs> um, civilization is dead, but Chito and Yuri are still alive, so they hop aboard their beloved Ketsenkran motorbike and aimlessly wander the ruins of the world they once knew. Day after hopeless day, they look for the next meal and fuel for their ride. But as long as the two are together, even an existence as bleak as theirs has a ray of two of sunshine in it. Whether they're sucking down... Hold on. Whether they're sucking down their fill of soup or are hunting for machine parts to tinker with. For two girls in a world full of nothing, the experiences and feelings the two share give them something to live for. I, that's actually kind of interesting, I won't lie. Um, I really want to watch it, but apparently I can't because it's not on fucking Crunchyroll! Anyway. Osama Game, the animation. Uh. Huh. I've actually heard good things about this one, too. Um. But I don't. Again, that's another one that I have no idea what to expect. I don't know. It, it seems like the kind of show that I'd be really interested in because it's that kind of uh, organized game of. Uh, well, let me, read the, let me read the synopsis first so you can see what I mean. The story begins when an entire high school class of 32 people receive a message on their cell phones from a person known only as the King. The messages contain orders that the students must obey, or they must risk punishment of death. With their lives on the line, the students soon find out that the orders are getting more and more extreme. Um, oh, wait. As time goes on, okay, yeah, either way. that. Well, yeah, it seems like the kind of show that reminds me a lot of, like, Future Diary... And I'm really interested in seeing how they tackle it. Um, just the kind of the kind of show like I really enjoy like death games in anime, like uh, Danganronpa, uh, you know, Future Diary. You basically, like something that's very organized, and also you're able to see re. It's like a character analysis of like what do you do when you put in that situation where you can't really resist, you know. Um, so that's a really interesting plot element for me. Uh, next up, we got Emoto Sae Iraba E. E. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm offending the entire Japanese populace. I'm sorry. Um, the story follows the everyday life of Itsuki, a novelist and modern day pygmy lion who works day in and day out to create the ultimate younger sister. He's surrounded by various other characters, a beautiful genius writer who loves him, his big sisterly classmate from college, a fellow male writer, a sadistic tax accountant, and his editor. They're all looked after by Itsuki's perfect younger stepbrother, Chihiro, who has a serious secret. He's a trap! Oh. 
Anyway, it seems like... I mean, this is probably not an original thought, but it seems a lot like the next generation of Aramanga Sensei. So, chances are I will probably not watch this, just because... I, I could only get through three episodes of Aramanga Sensei, and that was because I really tried. Like, the opening and ending was, like, would, would hook me. And after that, I was like, I have nothing left to watch this for. So, yeah. Alright, next up we got the uh, second season of Love Live Sunshine. Oh my gosh, more Love Live. I'm so happy. I haven't really seen any of Love Live yet. It's on my queue, but I have not gotten to see it yet. So, uh, that's good. I can have more, more Love Live to watch whenever I get around to it. Um, Hoseki no Kuni. In the distant future, a new life form called Hoseki gems are born. The 28 Hoseki must fight against the moon dwellers who want to attack them and turn them into decorations. Thus, each gem is assigned a role, such as a fighter or a medic. Though he hopes to fight the moon dwellers, Fos is a gem who is given no assignment until the gem's uh, master Adamantine asks him to, to edit a natural history museum. Edit a natural history magazine. Not a museum. Oh my gosh. So this is basically Steven Universe the anime. Um, just, maybe. Maybe. maybe I, I don't know. Uh, next up we got Code Realize. So say no Himigam Himigimi. Himigimi. Uh, restricted to an abandoned mansion on the outskirts of London in fulfillment of a promise to her father, Lonely Cardia lives day to day isolated from the world. Her body carries a deadly poison that rots or melts anything her skin touches, prompting the locals to call her a monster. One day, her quiet solitude is interrupted as her guards... Wait, as the royal guards break in to capture her. It is then that Cardia meets Arsene Lupin, uh, a, a chivalrous thief who helps her escape the cl soldier's clutches. She soon finds herself on a journey with Lupin, Lupin, to locate her father, who holds the answers to her mysterious condition. Um, Arsene Lupin. Alright. So, uh, is this in the same universe as Lupin the Third? Yeah? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, that, that seems interesting. Code Realize. I don't know anything, I've never heard of it. It says it's based on a video game, but I don't know, I've never heard of it, so, I mean, I can't really base it on anything, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, huh. Uh, then, oh, next up we got Yuki Yuna Yayusha, well, Yusha the Aru Yusha Yosho, which is the sequel to, uh, Yuki Yuna is a Hero, and I am really excited to see how they can possibly continue this series. It seemed like it was very, very much a, like, how do you, I mean, how do you continue it? I mean, it seemed like, whenever I watched the first series, it seemed a lot like they needed to continue it. But at the same time, it also felt perfectly fine if they didn't. So I'm really curious to see how they, you know, make another series with the same characters. Um, I thought maybe they could make another one with new characters, but the same characters, it looks like. Okay. Um, next up, we got Nechu no Susume. Um, Moriko Morioka is a 30-year-old single neat woman. After dropping out from reality, she has taken off in search of a fulfilling life and ended up in a net game or netoge. In the netoge world, she began her new life as a refreshing and handsome character named Hayashi. While starting out as a beginner, a pretty character named Lily reached out to help her. Meanwhile, in the real world, awaits a shocking encounter with a good-looking elite company employee, a mysterious blue-eyed blonde. Um, so is this the romantic comedy version of Sword Art Online? Are we, are we gonna finally get the romantic comedy version of Sword Art Online? If you can't tell, I, I, I don't like Sword Art Online. <laughs> I've already talked to you all about this before, so you don't need to be surprised. Um, next up we got Blend S. The story centers on a girl named Micah who gets a job at a cafe where all the waitresses are given certain attributes such as tsundere or little sister to embody while serving customers. The manager asks Micah to be the, the do-s extreme sadist waitress so she will have to adopt a dominant and aggressive persona. Oh, 
yeah, I'm watching this shit. I, that sounds hilarious. I can't wait. Ow, my throat hurts. <laughs> uh, next up we got Konohana no, uh, Konohana Kitan. The manga story is set in Ko Kokohanate, a hot spring hotel located in in town because between our world and the other world, where many people go to visit. The story portrays the lives of fox spirits who take the form of girls and work at the hotel. Oh boy! We've got another title that reminds me of Fox Spirit Matchmaker, that piece of shit. I watched one episode of that show and I was like, fuck this. This is, this is annoying as hell. Anyway. But yeah. And, and besides that, I'm not a huge fan of like anime that involved yokai. I don't know why. Anytime I give it a try, I always end up dropping it because it's just... Uh, I, I don't know why. It just doesn't seem interesting to me. So maybe this will be the same. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, next up, we got Huzoki no Ritetsu 2, which is the second season of a show that I've never seen. So can't really comment on that. But it is by Studio Dean, which is the studio who did Konosuba. So that could be interesting. Uh, Garo finish, uh, Vanishing Line. Uh, the anime story is set in a preposter preposterous... Uh, a prosperous city named Russell City. Even as the city celebrates its success, a conspiracy that threatens to shake its world has been set into motion. A man named Sword is the first to hear the earliest stirrings of the plot and throws himself into a shadow ward in order to expose it. His only clue is the keyword, El Dorado. He meets Sophie, a woman, searching for her older si other brother, older brother, who left her with only a message with the same word, El Dorado. With Sword having also lost his younger sister in the past, both are drawn together by the word and work together to find out its meaning. And it, based on the promotion alert, it seems like there's a more realistic uh, visual style, which is interesting. Um, we'll see about uh, how it looks in, in real time, I guess, in the future. Then we got Anime Guitarist, Anime Guitaris. I imagine it's like a play on the Monogatari anime guitari. I don't know. Uh, the anime centers on Minoa Asagaya, a new high school student in Sakaneko Private High School. Despite being a novice to anime, Minoa's classmate Ariso Kamigusa invites her to make an anime research club at school. Though conversations with her classmate, through conversations with her classmate Miko Koenji, as well as various anime-loving upperclassmen, Minoa gradually gets hooked on anime. While they stand against the student council's continuous efforts to disband their club, and they ignore the impending end of the world, they talk about anime, whether in Akiba or in real life, sacred place anime settings, or the hot springs. That actually seems interesting. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about that. Um, that actually seems really interesting, though. I'm, I'm, I want to I wanna check that out. And it is apparently it's based. It's not based on anything. It's original, so that's also cool because they can tell a complete story. Um, next up we got Osamatsu san 2. Um, I tried to watch Osamatsu san Not, not a huge fan. I think it's just because there's a cultural barrier and I just couldn't quite figure out why it was so good. I mean, it seems like it's, oh, it's wacky. Yeah, that's cool. But it's like, I'm not really a huge fan of that kind of stuff. So that's probably not my cup of tea, but it might be up to yours. So if you're interested in seeing the second season, it, uh, it is coming this season. So, uh. Yeah, keep your, keep your eyes open for that. Um, next up, we got Gintama Shinsaku, which is the sixth season of Gintama. Wow, Gintama is still going on. That is, uh, I need to actually give it a try. I have not seen it yet. I, I really want to. I just it's, it's just on my list of things to watch. So, you know. All right, next up, we got Sengoku Nightblood. The game centers around different warlords from Japan's warring states. Sengoku period who are all involved with the player character. The game is described as a warring state's romance fantasy. So it probably remind, it reminds me a lot of, like, uh, Hakuoki, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, that's probably going to be kind of the token uh, bisho or bishonen kind of kind of thing. Like the uh, the whole, oh, they're, they're really manly men, and they fight and kill things, but they're also really immaculate, and they... Are kind of beautiful, so anyway, I mean, there's always a, there's always at least one anime that's like that, um, and I think that might be it. So uh, next we got two car, 
Uh, original anime by Silverlink commemorating their 10th anniversary. Uh, it focuses on two girls involved with competitive motorcycle sidecar racing. That's new. That's something I've never seen before. That actually might be interesting. I mean, at least for a, a, a couple episodes. Uh, but it, then again, it also might be, like, uh, Fastest Finger First, which was, like... Just because it's new doesn't mean it's good! <laughs> uh, Robomasters, the animated series. Um, anime based on the DJ, DJI-hosted Robomasters competition, which is the world's biggest student robotics competition. So, basically, riding on the coattails of robotics notes. Okay. Um, the Idol Master Side M, based on the Idol Master Side M app. Wonderful. We get an Idol Master game with a bunch of guys. That's... Cool. Uh, Urahara. Uh, three high school girls are putting together a limited time shop called Park in Japan's Harajuku. One day, aliens come to Earth with the intent to steal the famed district's culture. At the same time, a mysterious girl appears. The three girls bend to band together to defeat the alien threat and project their protect their beloved Harajuku. Okay, so Jimmy Neutron, except everybody's a, a cute anime girl. And they, instead of trying to protect their parents from aliens, they're trying to protect Harajuku from aliens. Checks out. Uh, Suki Pro, the animation. The music anime will follow the daily lives and associated drama of four of Suki Pro's very unique groups, Solid S, Quell, Sora, and Growth. So, basically, um, what's it called? Oh, what's it called? I know... I know the name of this anime that I'm looking for. What is it called? Oh! I don't remember. There was a certain, uh, certain anime that I was thinking of that was like a music-based anime that had a lot of drama, and I was going to compare it to that, but I forgot what it was called, damn it! Uh, Isudate Bakubokura no Koi wa Tensium Data. Adolescent romance takes another twist with the announcement of a TV anime based on the Kokuhaku Jinko Inkai uh, Confess Your Love Committee series of Vocaloid songs by Honeyworks. I am so hyped for this! I love the Honeyworks uh, music videos. I love the songs. I love the Confess Your Love Committee series. Um, I haven't seen the newest one yet, but the newest movie yet, but the fact that they're making an anime series based on it is just yes! Give it! Bring it on! I want... I want more, even though it's not for another 57 days! What the heck? Uh, when is it? November 24th! What the heck? That's a long way away. Uh, we got Infinite T-Force, a full 3D CG anime project to celebrate the 55th anniversary of Tatsunoko Productions. The anime has a different story from the original manga. Okay. So, it looks like... Is that Kashurn? Mm -hmm. Looks like Kashurn, kind of. But I don't know a lot of Tatsunoko characters, so that might not be. It might be someone completely off. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting. It's kind of weird to see a full 3D CG anime. I don't know. It has to be really good, otherwise it's gonna be really shit. There's no real middle ground there. It's either really good or really bad. Uh, we got Wake Up Girls Shinso. The new anime will feature the previous Wake Up Girls group members, but it will also add new characters, so more idle blob stuff that you might enjoy. Uh, Dynamic Chord. The project follows the musical careers and personal lives of several bands under the Dynamic Chord agency and music label. Um, then we got Classical Lloyd Season 2! Yeah, boy! Classical Lloyd Season 2, I'm so excited for. Um, then we got Time Bokan, Gyokushu, Nosano Kunin, um... The second season of Time Book on 24. I, I don't know. And then we got Card Fight Vanguard GZ. Fifth season of Card Fight, Van Card Fight Vanguard G series. Then we got some leftovers. I'm not going to focus too much on the leftovers for this video. Just because that's not the point. But I do want to mention. Uh, uh, continuing Fate Apocrypha. Uh, Ballroom at Yokosa. Which is Welcome to the Ballroom. Shokoku no Altair. Um... Maho Jin Guru Guru, Shiro Tan, Shiro Tan, uh, Ga Ipai. Then we got some TV shorts for those of you who are interested in those. We got Dia Horizon, uh, Osake wa Fufu Ninate Kara, which um, is about uh, 
The slightly sweet, tipsy couple comedy ma manga centers on the 28-year-old senior public relations company staff member Chisato Mizusawa. The story follows Chisato's daily life as she enjoys her husband Sora's cocktails. Chisato has secrets that only her husband knows. Basically, she's a drunk. So that's going to be fun. I always like the kind of shorter series, the kind of short form anime that they usually have. Like, They don't really bog you down with too much drama. They just kind of hit you with the funny stuff and then let you go. So I, if it's in, if it's in, uh, if it's not Crunchyroll, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Uh, then we got uh, Omiai Aita Aite wa Oshiego Suyoki na Manda, Manda Iji. Uh, I have no idea what that means and what there's no synopsis, so I can't tell. It's probably a, a romance anime in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Taisho Chi, Chi, Chai San, uh, based on the boys' love game. Oh God, Taisho Mebius Line. The game is set during Japan's Taisho era, 1912 to 1926, and it centers on Kyo Ichiro Hiragi, a boy who travels from his provincial town to Tokyo to attend university. He carries with him his family's story to protect himself. When he arrives in Tokyo, he becomes swept up in a plot by the Imperial Army. Okay. So that's a thing that's uh, happening, apparently. Uh, Cinderella Girls, Geki Joe, second season. Uh, that's happening. Pingu in the City. I see, I've, I've seen some things about Pingu. I don't know anything about it, though, per se. Um, so I got that. Love Kome, We Love Rice 2. Uh, okay. Ame Khan and Ore Tacha Yokai Ningen. Um, short TV anime series celebrating the 50th anniversary of Yokai Ningen Ben. Okay. Uh, then we got some movies. For those of you who are interested in movies, we got Face Day Night Heaven's Feel 1, Presage Flower. First film in a trilogy adaptation of the third route of the popular visual novel, Fate Day Night. Okay, that works. Uh, Godzilla Kaiju Wakusei. Uh, it's, needs, doesn't, it's not, that needs not to be explained. We know what Godzilla is. We know basically more or less the same general concept. The concept. Um, free, take your marks. Oh, God, they're making a sequel anime to Free. Oh, man. Haikara san Gatoru movie. Uh, Dance with Devils, Fortuna. Donten wa, ni Warao wa, wa, Gaiden. Katsubetsu, Yama Inu no Chikai. Um, laughing under the clouds. Girls Unpanzer, Sai Shusho, Mobile Suit Gundam, Thunderbolt, Bandit Flower, uh, DC Superheroes vs. Taka no Sume Dan. That's interesting. Uh, Kira Kira Precure a la Mode, uh, movie, I guess. We got some OVAs. We got, um, Shingeki no Kyojin Lost Girls. There's a three part OVA. Oh, they're going to have an Attack on Titan OVA series. I wonder if we're going to get it in as, as a sub. I wonder. Uh, is the Order a Rabbit a, a special? Hajime Tendo Gal OVA. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Buso Shoujo Machiavellianism. Uh, Nekopara. We got the Nekopara uh, OVA special, which I've heard a lot from uh, Lost Paws. So that's that should be interesting. Uh, Hizukuri. Uh, Yama no Susume Omoide Present Bang Dream Special Uchu Senkan Yamato 2202 I no Senji Tachi Junai Hen um, And then Baja no Studio um, So If you notice I was kind of rushing through those last few titles Because one I'm running out of space on my camera And I need to go ahead and hurry it along But I wanted to, to cover everything on the list Because you know, there's fans of all kinds of things on this channel, probably. And I figure if I open it up to as many people, you know, they'll feel welcome here. So if you saw something that you're really excited for on this list, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what title that is and whether or not you would recommend it for me. My typical go-to is I enjoy the romantic comedy uh, anime that usually air every season. I, I love Toradora, as you probably already know, uh, Golden Time. Uh, this season, I was really, really impressed with uh, Gamers and uh, Sewer Direct Children, but I'll talk about that, those in another video. But I want to I hear, what do you, what would you recommend that I, that I really hone in on this season? And then, uh, yeah, so that being said, thank you for watching. My name is Pixelation, and uh, 
what's going on in my life? If you, uh, if you are in the Austin, Texas area, I'm actually gonna be at Ramen Expo, uh, on Monday, uh, October 9th. Yes, I believe it's October 9th. I will be at Ramen Expo. I'm, I'm just gonna be there as press. I'm not gonna be a guest or anything. Why would I be a guest at a Ramen Expo? I don't know. But, uh, if you're gonna be at Ramen Expo, come, 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 to, come, come, come down to the, uh, come, come check me, you know, come see, uh, come see what's going on. And if you see me, uh, flag me down and say hi. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to, to, to say hi and, and talk to all y'all. So, that being said, thank you for watching. If you have anything you'd like to say to me, by all means, hit me up on Twitter at pixelation underscore. And until next time, stay pixelated.